Over the course of my 20s, I have tried over a hundred different apps, tools, and software, really just trying to optimize my life to be as productive as possible. Having the right tools will really help to bring more clarity to your life, help you stay on top of tasks, and also just generally help you feel more in control. So after almost a decade of trial and error, here are six of my favorite productivity tools that have actually helped improve and optimize my schedule, work better and more productively, and just be more organized overall. So if you've also been looking for some new productivity tools to integrate into your workflow, then this video is for you. Starting off with a habit that I think is probably the most productive habit that I've ever integrated into my life, and it is journaling. I still do my morning pages every single day. The morning pages is an exercise from Julia Cameron's book, The Artist's Way, and it really just asks you to write three free-flowing, thought journaling pages into your journal first thing in the morning before you start the rest of your day. The purpose of doing morning pages is really just to act as a brain dump so that you can organize your thoughts your anxieties, your worries, and anything else that might be happening in your brain and get it all on paper so that you can start your day fresh. In the book, Julia Cameron says, morning pages clarify our yearning. They help to keep an eye on our goals. They may provoke us, coax us, comfort us, even cajole us, as well as prioritize and synchronize the day at hand. If we are drifting, the pages will point that out. They will point the way for you. Each morning as we face the page, we meet ourselves. The pages give us a place to vent and a place to dream, and they're really intended for no eyes but our own. Nowadays, I don't necessarily always write three pages. Sometimes it's just one page and sometimes it's five pages. But as long as I do the act of journaling every morning and just jot down some things that are going on in my head, I always find that it helps to defog my brain and just helps me be more productive as I carry on through my day. Now, even though the morning pages is supposed to be these three pages of free flowing thoughts, I do like to add some structure to my journaling as well. So whenever I am journaling, I always write within three categories. I journal for clarity, for grounding, or for auditing. I did create an entire video on how I journal and the tips and strategies that I learned over the years. So if you want to learn how to journal to really better your life, I'd highly recommend checking out this video, which I've included in the cards, and I'll also link in the description box below. Now, my productivity tech stack, if you will, would not be complete without a solid calendar tool. I live by and swear by time blocking, so it's really important for me to have a calendar that works well with that strategy. Whenever I'm looking and evaluating calendar apps, there's a few things that are on my checklist. One is having some sort of a scheduling tool, much like something like a Calendly. So being able to select availabilities in my schedule and then sending it off via email as a link for people to look through my schedule and book calls with me. Because I work with a lot of clients and brands within other time zones, it's important that it has some sort of a feature that shows me the other time zones compared to my own time zone as well. And again, because I time block, it's important for there to be some sort of a customization option, whether that's color coding, grouping or whatever it is, being able to see all of my tasks that fall under different categories really clearly at a glance just makes calendar apps that much more effective for me. The reason I love AccuFlow is because it literally ticks off all of those boxes and it has the most amazing customization options that I've ever seen. So you're able to group your tasks by priority or even by project. You're also able to define whether it's a task, an event, or a time block. So you can essentially turn your calendar into a to-do list or into the perfect tool for time blocking. Now, all of those features are absolutely amazing, but the best part of AccuFlow is that it actually integrates with whatever other productivity tools you use. So I personally use Gmail and Notion, so I've integrated both of those tools into my AccuFlow so that it'll automatically bring in my Notion tasks and any actionables from emails that I've labeled as AccuFlow. It'll pull all of that data into an inbox so that you can 
actually plan your day and not have to leave AccuFlow to look at everything else that's going on in your life. They also have this really clever feature called Rituals, which essentially is prompting you to build the habit of reviewing your calendar. So every night you will actually go through and review your tasks for the day. And if you finished it, you can tick it off. Or if you haven't finished it, you can either schedule it for another day or shift it back to your inbox. And then every morning, it'll actually prompt you to plan your day. So figuring out what your day is going to look like, if there's any tasks from your inbox that you can add to that day, or if there's any tasks that you need to remove. The next tool is one that probably everyone has already tried once or twice, and it is ChatGPT. I often hear people say that ChatGPT just isn't that useful for them, but I want to argue that maybe you're just not using it in the correct way and you aren't using the right prompts. AI is an amazing tool that can help you in a ton of different scenarios as long as you're able to use it in the most effective way. So it can help with content creation, creating automatic responses, assisting with coding, analyzing and explaining data. It can help with your learning, your research, your meeting prep, idea generation. And if you really want to dive deep into it, you can actually integrate it with other tools so that it acts like your personal assistant. Now, I just want to put a disclaimer out there that AI is not meant to replace your brain. It is meant to act as a support or to assist you with your existing thought processes and tasks. For example, Example, I'll use ChatGPT to help me build out YouTube ideas. So I'll tell it, we're trying to make a video on this topic. Here are all the points that I want covered. Can you help me think of some video title ideas or help me draft an outline to the video that I can follow when I'm filming? The best thing that you can do to really make ChatGPT work for you is to make sure that you're learning the tips and strategies that you need to give it the best input so that it can give you the best output. When I was first learning how to use ChatGPT, I found this amazing free resource by HubSpot, which includes a ton of tips and knowledge to help you use AI more effectively. There's a decision chart to teach you when is best to use AI, a template to help you set clear guidelines no matter what you're using it for, a content refinement checklist, a checklist that'll teach you how to use AI for work, and even a step-by-step -step guide on how to optimize ChatGPT, which includes over a hundred different prompts for you to try. Really understanding the best practices as well as what info you should provide is what's going to ensure that you can make ChatGPT work for you no matter what scenario you're using it for. For example, one prompt that I loved and used myself from that doc was, can you assist me in creating a timeline for our upcoming marketing campaign? And then I would just specify the details such as the campaign start date and end date. So if you're interested in learning how to best use ChatGPT and integrate it into your your workflow. I'll link the free resource below in the description. It's honestly helped me a ton and I really think that'll help you as well. I know everyone talks about Notion, but Notion is definitely the tool that I use the most when it comes to my productivity workflow. I use it for project management at work, planning content, keeping recipes, drawing up meal plans, recording my reading notes and progress, and even planning my travels and setting goals. As with any tool, Notion definitely has its pros and cons, but some reasons why I really love it is because it's super customizable, so you can really build out any type of workflow to make it work for you. It also has an amazing community behind it, so you're actually able to find a ton of both free and paid templates that'll help give you a head start with your own workflow. I did create an entire separate video on how I use Notion to project manage at work, but if you want any other walkthroughs or tutorials on how I I personally use Notion for productivity. Let me know and I'll create those videos next. Moving on to the next tool. One of my biggest pain points, both in my personal productivity as well as my work productivity, is my email inbox. When I was working as a marketing director in tech, I would get hundreds, if not thousands of emails a day. It was truly an endless task trying to look through it all. And then on top of that, I have my personal emails as well, where I have newsletters and notifications and meeting requests. And between those two inboxes, it felt like I was spending way too much time just trying to organize it all. The reason that I love Spark so much is because it really promotes the idea of having inbox zero or having nothing in your main inbox. Spark kind of treats your email inbox as a task list. So every morning I go through my email inbox and quickly categorize it to one of Spark's categories. So you 
you can either mark it as done, which actually removes it from the inbox, but doesn't delete it. You can set it as a priority email. So you know, to come back to it, you can set a reminder to come back to the email. You can put that email aside. You can of course also use labels and folders, just like traditional email tools. There's just a million different ways that you can categorize your emails. And that has really helped me because it means that I can tell myself and remind myself to look at certain emails or deal with certain emails right at that moment. Spark also has a smart inbox, so it already automatically groups all of your newsletters, notifications, and meeting invites so that everything else that's showing up in your inbox are actual conversations or emails that you need to get to. After I started using Spark, I've actually been able to see the end of my emails, which was unheard of before. So it's one that I really feel like I cannot live without and I feel like I won't go back to just using Gmail or Outlook. As much as it's important to have tools to help us organize our life and stay productive, it's important that we have tools that help us stay focused and eliminate distractions as well. And that's where Opal comes in. Opal is an app that you can download onto your phone and it'll actually help you block your access to certain apps. So for example, I have a reoccurring time block within Opal that blocks all of my social media apps all of my email apps so that I don't feel tempted to reach for my phone first thing in the morning. Besides just helping you actually block the apps, it'll actually tell you a lot of stats as well. So it'll tell you your overall screen time, what the most used apps are, how many times you've picked up your phone, your focus score, and even what apps are the most distracting. Being able to actually create these reoccurring time blocks for when I know I might be feeling distracted really helps me unlearn the habit of reaching for my phone when I want to distract myself. Of course, all the tools that I mentioned will be linked in the description box below, but besides just having these apps and software that really help me, I wanted to give you a rapid fire recommendation list of some physical tools that I have found positively impacted my productivity as well. The first are my Philips Hue bulbs. I have them in all of my lamps as well as my overhead lights. And I just love these because I can create little routines and tie them with different moods of light. So for example, in the morning, I actually have my bedside lamp set as a sunrise. So it slowly gets brighter as it gets closer to the time that I'm about to wake up. The second are these Bose headphones. They are still by far my favorite headphones for work. They are light to wear. I can wear them for hours and they're super, super comfortable. They're actually also the best headphones that I've tried for calls. They just have such good noise cancellation that even if I'm in a noisy cafe, my team has never complained that they can hear my background noise. I have to give a shout out to my ankle laptop stand. I do like to move around the house throughout my work day and having my beautiful laptop stand, just make sure that no matter where I'm working, whether it's on the couch, at my dining table or at my desk, that I always have an ergonomic workspace. The Samsung SSD is a tool that I really truly cannot live without. I no longer keep any working files on my laptop to make sure that my laptop stays super fast. You can have as many productivity tools tools in your tool belt as you want, but if you're not building those into a workflow and a system, it's not actually going to help you be more productive. So if you want to learn how I actually created an organizational system that helps me use those tools to be more productive, I would definitely recommend checking out this video next. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you're having an amazing day wherever you are in the world, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.